for the beginners in the Angular community. Um, we have one last speaker for our Angular walkabout today, and I'm going to do a drum roll to welcome her to the stage. Welcome, Yvonne Allen. <laughs> Hi, hi everyone. I'm so excited to be here today. I am like here for the noobs. I speak for the noobs. So I'm excited to teach you what I'm going to be teaching you or just kind of helping to understand more about this particular, I feel, I like to call it a Pandora's box because, you know, when you're first, you're, you're a new developer, you're like, yeah, that file is scary. So I'm just going to keep following the tutorial. <laughs> yeah, no, absolutely. And do you want to tell us a little bit about, um, before we get into your talk, will you tell us where you're joining from, what time it is for, for you, and a little bit about yourself? Yeah. So uh, my name is Yvonne Allen. I am a Anglo GDE out here in Atlanta. So I'm an AT aliens. So what's up? Uh, <laughs> clowning. And so basically, I, well, you know, my friend Eric just came up. I am a newbie, uh, well, part of the panelists on that particular podcast. I've been around the circuit for a little while, not too long. I'm um, doing being a speaker, so you may have seen me um, speaking at NG Atlanta when it was going. Uh, I did one NG Conf um, and Ionic, so you know I do a lot of speaking, but my speaking is more geared towards newbies to intermediate. So I like to get in there and get to talk more about the new stuff that, or like you're beginner, but you you're still in the intermediate, like you're in the middle, and certain things are just kind of tripping you up, and you don't really understand it, or it's just kind of glossed over in all the tutorials. So like they they handle either the bigger stuff or the new, like this total beginner stuff and you need the stuff in the middle. That's where I like mm -hmm. to do talks because that's where I usually am. I'm like, I am confused. So <laughs> I, I just don't feel like there's a lot out there for people that are kind of stuck in the middle. Excuse me. <clears throat> Trying to- No, I love that. And it's, you're so right. There's quite a gap and I think, um, it's important that there's people that are passionate about filling it. So yeah, I'm so it's like you so be pumped. Like, so <laughs> up there or so down here. So it's like I need to part right there. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, I, it's good to know that you're in Atlanta. I'm gonna like whenever people start traveling again, I need to make sure I'm like at events that you're at because I'm like I don't think we've got to hang out IRL. So it needs it needs to happen. <laughs> yes, absolutely. <laughs> um, so tell us about the talk today, what we'll be diving into. So today we're going to be diving into the Angular workspace. We're going to actually be deep diving, as I like to say, with your scuba gear and, you know, your snorkeling mask, because we're going to, we're going to get in there. We're going to get in the water and we're not going to put our toes in. We're going to, we're going to deep dive. And we're going to talk <laughs> about the Angular workspace file, and, uh, commonly known as the Angular.json file. And we're going to get in there. We're going to figure out what all those properties are meaning, how they, you know, relate to our project and why are they important to us? I love it. You are, una it looks seemingly, it looks to me, unafraid <laughs> to tackle what I would be like. <laughs> Let's close that file. Yeah, we're yeah. going to close it and we're just going to go over here now. <laughs> so, all right. We're going to look at um, the first I properties and then we're going to move on. <laughs> mm -hmm. I, Ivana said, hey, Raiders. So I think we just got raided. I don't know how many people are joining, but welcome. This is the Angular Walkabout. And Yvonne is just starting her session today. She's wrapping us up. This is a stream for Angular beginners. Um, so everybody, of course, is welcome, even if you're an expert. But today we were hoping to lower the barrier um, to entry a little bit for the Angular community. So welcome, Raiders. Glad to have you. Um, and I'm going to, Yvonne, if you want to share your screen, I will plop it up. And I'm so excited to learn more and take this deep dive. Me to too. The workspace, the workspace file. That uh, That's apparently your song now. <laughs> <laughs> I love songs, so that would work. Uh -oh, I minimize it, and I'm into like oh, making nice. It. Okay, uh, welcome raiders. <laughs> there we go. So let me share that. I'm always like the one scrambling around when I'm trying to present something. For me, I'm like. 
Ooh, which screen? What screen? Is it on that one? And then it's, right. it's of course, inevitably the wrong one. <laughs> I'm usually always, I'm always doing that. Um, wait, am I sharing? Uh, no, yes, here. Air. Ha -ha! Yeah. We can technology. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wait. Okay. I'll do it again. Okay. We'll make that big. I feel like I did it right. Okay. Looking good, looking beautiful. I'm All so right. excited. <laughs> so um, <clears throat> just another tip about me. I am not a perfectionist. I am actually the one who will mess up everything and be like, hold on, y'all, wait a minute. I'll be right back. Uh, let me let me uh, fix this. So <laughs> if you're looking for a down-to-earth speaker who does not deal well in perfection, that's me. So if, you, <laughs> if you're okay with that, then you're okay with me. <laughs> so... Um, so just to start us off, my name is Yvonne um, Allen. Again, I like to repeat that for some reason. I and I'm going to be talking to you about the deep, uh, doing a deep dive with you into the Angular Workspace file, also known as the Angular.json file. You can find me on Twitter at yallen011, or you can find me at LinkedIn using my name, Yvonne Allen. So. <clears throat> Today, we're gonna to do a deep dive and I will be your deep diving instructor. It is very important that you pay close attention and follow my lead because I don't want any of you to get lost in the sea of angular.json. Now, last but not least, if you can't find your assigned angular buddy, stay, stay where you are and someone will rescue you. I'm sure of it, I think. <laughs> and, um, now let's get geared up. Get your scuba gear on. So I, I don't think you know this, but like I'm a huge diver. So this is just perfect. Like I oh, love this so much. <laughs> this theme is mwah. And I'm a sea bunny, so I love to get into the sea and swim. So, <laughs> so prior to Angular 6, um, the Angular CLI was built built a singular project, and we used the Angular. Okay, um, and that was in the using the Angular dash CLI JSON file, and we did ng new project name, and it was just whatever you want to name the project. But after that, now Angular builds a workspace with a default application using, and, and now that's why that one of the changes was, you know, now it's angular.json instead of angular CLI.json, but I'm pretty sure that's not why they changed it. But <laughs> that's, you can see that there was a difference. You used to see prior to like angular six, you would see angular-cli.json and now you see angular.json, but it's the exact same file. Well, it's, it's you know, it's still the, the angular workspace file, but <clears throat> now you're creating a workspace instead of a project. So technically you're doing ng new workspace, but because you know simplicity and you want to keep compatibility the same and you you just kind of use the same command. But if you're like me and you did not know that there was a change that happened there, um comment II Captain if you feel my pain on I didn't know that it was a change. And it went unnoticed because of compatibility, you know, they want to keep it compatible and do the right thing there. So Big ups to Angular for you know not having us having to create new commands and everything, but also you should have you know we should have known. Like <laughs> I think we should have, we should have like um, a a warning bell, you know, and yeah, it's like a, a warning like, bell, and we ring it. Exactly, <laughs> exactly. You're creating workspaces now, people. It's not just a project anymore. So um, you know, I feel like uh, you're that that newspaper person. <laughs> hear ye, hear ye. There was a change. <laughs> so there was no breaking change. Good for us and people who don't like to change their lives because one sim like one major thing happened in Angular. But also for the newbies, that's not explained. So this was for you, everyone who's a newbie. And maybe if you wasn't even here when that happened, so you, it's not a big deal for you. But like it's a big deal for people who were here since like Angular, uh, Angular JSON. <laughs> so um, it was a big thing, y'all. <laughs> now, so let's talk more about Angular Workspace. What happened there? Um, <clears throat> what does it do now? What are the benefits that were provided for you? So the biggest benefits is 
code reuse. So now that Angular is now a workspace, you can now have multiple projects inside of a workspace as opposed to having all these different projects um, and you're trying to worry about connecting it together and um, integration issues. So now you can have a huge project full of libraries and applications all in one place utilizing by utilizing the mono repo architecture, which is now like a buzzword, guys. So write that down. Mono, mono repo. Got it. Okay. Write that down. So I know. Like, there's so many words like that that have, I've kind of become numb to, you know? Exactly. I'm like, right, so basically, right, just for yes. our newbies out here and, and, and like new beginners, developers, new, mono repo is one way of saying I have a project, um, I have a, uh, let's say, a store, right? And I want to be able to have discounts with my store, like to offer discounts. I want to be able to have all my products and to be able to have them purchased. But I also offer meal plans. So with your products, you have one project, this whole one project, and it has a different pay structure and different discounts. And then you have meal plans. You have your meal plans where you can show people uh, different ways to eat, different foods, nutrition. And those come with their own set of discounts and product pr and pricings. But it's still one store because you have a health store, but you don't want to have one project over here for your, you know, your product, your food products, which you may use in your meal plans. You don't want to have to have two different things for that. If you put it all in one now under the one store, that's called mono repo or a store. <laughs> it's another way to think of it. Um, but it also now because of all those things, you can now have a more efficient work workflow which we all love efficiency, right? Work smarter, not harder. So let's look into what are the changes and what you can expect now and what you probably have already seen now. Let's kind of let's kind of like deep dive into that and see what, what, you know, just break that down. So first you have when you when you use the ng new command and you, you, you create a workspace. Now it's not a project anymore, even though we do call it project, but technically it's a workspace. So the first thing you see is the name of the workspace up top. If you use VS Code, I'm using VS Code in this snapshot. So you will see I name I create a project called I create a workspace called excuse me workspace, but I kind of shortened it. And now, as always, you would see the default app, right? Because we use the the I would say the shortened very like the shortened command to create a new project because there are more commands you can use in order to generate project with different defaults which we will be covering that in a second <clears throat> so let's go into our angular workspace file right over to your right here you will see that you have listed under the projects object the name of the initial the default project you created when you use the ng new workspace command which is what most people are used to seeing, when, especially if you are a new beginner, uh, a beginner in Angular, and you're doing a lot of tutorials. This is what you see usually, and you will see that you have a default project. The default project when you use the ng new command becomes the same name, um, will be named the same as what you named the workspace because by default when you use the ng new workspace command, it creates a project and gives it the same name as your workspace. So. That is the way that is the way that Angular kept everything the same, but changed at the same time. Because now when you're creating a workspace and you're you're used to creating a project, which will, of course, well, you know, that's the name of your project. But now since it creates a workspace, it kind of um, automated it and created you a default project by the way. Um, and so this behavior works great for people who are new to Angular or who are just you you know creating small projects for tutorials you usually don't need to create any you know three or four applications or any libraries so this this one command does like three things at once which is great when you're just trying to get up and running test some things out you know do a tutorial keep everything succinct now as i mentioned before there's many ways to go about creating a new project and this is another one so in this ins instance, we're going to be creating uh, a new empty workspace. So we, we still use ng new, the name of the workspace, but now we add um, a different option, which is dash dash create application equals false. So in this instance, we create a workspace with a complete empty 
default application. So no default application will be created in this time. So now if you look over to the right under angular.json, you will see the projects object, which was previously filled, let's go back with a object called workspace and a default object um, attribute. We don't get that anymore. So now everything is empty. So like you're basically starting with a shell workspace where you can do whatever you want to. So in this case, this is great for, and you will see this a lot uh, with people who are probably using NX, where they're doing more of a monorepo code, monorepo, where they're creating applications and on a, on a different, your, your infrastructure of your application or your workspace is completely different and it's more advanced. So that you create your applications inside the workspace and you don't have a default application um, when you're doing more advanced work because you're, you're either building a library where it's, it's full. Um, a good one is ng prime, where it's basically a, a UI library for adding like a design, um, a, a design library for, for designing different components in your application. So you will see that type of architecture in a more advanced project like that, but not in, you know, what, what new beginners do. So you also notice that there is a, a drastic reduction in files created when you create the workspace and then um, when you create your workspace without a default project as well. Now that I kind of gave you the surface, let's go a little bit deeper and we're going to do a deep dive and kind of show you firsthand what I just showed you. <laughs> but I want you to see, because if you're like me, seeing it, is better like actual seeing me coded and seeing you know me showing you so let's do an example where i create an empty workspace um and i created i create a, a default workspace then i create an empty one and kind of show you the differences and what that looks like so let me pull this up and I hope you all are still with me. If you're still with me, give me a thumbs up. If not, if I lost you somewhere, let me know. <laughs> and I'll try to go back and let's, you know. And kind of I'm not lost you. yet. Okay. Uh, That's good. <laughs> <laughs> so let's do, a, let's do a default workspace first. So we can kind of compare and contrast the two. So ng new, let's give it workspace. No, we don't need any routing. We're not even going to go that deep. <laughs> We're not going that deep. So let that do its thing. And let's create one. Um, oops. And let's create another one. Yes, you love in the chat. <laughs> awesome. I'm glad we're all here. <laughs> and we're like, yeah, we're not lost yet. You're okay. <laughs> all right, so let's go and open our new um our new okay. Let's let's do the one with workspace first. Let's open that one. All right, so here we're gonna see and look at the file structure. So just kind of check out like, okay, boom, got your app because we created a default app. This one creates a default application. Let's go into the Angular workspace file. All right, so this one, as we saw previously in the slides, you have um, <clears throat> new project roots. So basically that means that every project will go into the projects folder when we do create projects that are outside of the default project. And so people, so later on, don't get confused by when we create a project using the ng new workspace. And then if we create one uh, without it, you'll see the difference because they'll be stored in the projects root directory. And so we created a project, you got your project type, the name of the project as we, these ones we know, 
And this one is just the list of schematics with any um, change in the, in the uh, options configurations. This is the default one just set to true. Um, and this is what kind of what you see. And then down at the bottom, like we saw earlier, you have a default project called Workspace. And I will go over all these other ones. I promise you, I will not leave you hanging. There is so this is what this is what intimidated me when I first started. You just you just scroll and scroll and it's like, what in the world is this? <laughs> so it's very scary in here when you first look at it. It's like, oh my god! Like, yeah, I mean that's why that's why you close the file and then right, you, you just kind of close it down. <laughs> And then you got your 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 blue words, and then you have your brown words, <laughs> and you're like, what are these words? And you're like, just just let's just not, okay? And um, so let's 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 open up another one. Let's do a new one. This because we can kind of compare and contrast. Just all right, this one we did with no app. Let's make it smaller. All right, let's go back into the Angular Workspace file just so we can have a compare and contrast on this. And yes, there's easy ways to do this, y'all. I know. All right, let's um, put that. All right. So now we see, let's just even bring this down. Okay. Let's go in there. Oh, Lord, that was my fault. <laughs> I did not what, change the, what happened? Uh, I didn't change the, I didn't add the, see, like I said, um, when you're hanging out with me, I'm not a perfectionist. I'll be forgetting stuff. So let's try this one more time. <laughs> one more time, y'all. Uh, I didn't add the, the, add the default. Oh, the, um, the, yeah. Like the flag? Yeah, I didn't add the flag. Do no app work space dash dash create Oops. It was false. Right. This time I'm it's gonna be um oh what did I say what did I call it last name? I was inside of it. So um, people that are new, if you're trying to create a new application within another application, you cannot do that. You have to backtrack out into the root directory that your application, your like I just grouped my Angular applications in a folder called Angular, Angular underscore applications. But this the command didn't work this time because I was already in an Angular application. So I can't create a new one from within in a current one. So that you get that error, that's what happens. So this we're gonna back out and we're gonna say uh I already said no app. <laughs> app none. <laughs> I'm bad with naming stuff, y'all, so please forgive me for the horrible name. Oh, I might wanna add the command dinner. Okay, see, it's working, y'all. I know, I know how to, <laughs> I know how to work, work this, and just I'm just beginning sometimes. All right, so there we go. So let's open that one. This is close. This one, please. None. You're looking for like ridiculous namer? That's me. It's like, yeah, these names make no <laughs> sense at all. <laughs> okay, so look, now you can see the difference. Um, let me put, sorry, I forgot to do this before the call. 
So now you see the difference in the file structures themselves. So now you see there is no source folder at all, but you still have the Angular workspace file and you look how drastic in the files, like all the um, objects you have, it's like basically nothing. So this is what it looks like when you're creating a empty workspace. Now let's add an application so we can do that as well. So now that you're creating a, a work, you created empty workspace. So you're basically starting from scratch here. Let's do ng generate application. And we're going to name it um, cat. And under that, we're going to do sass because we're sassy. <laughs> Not really. <laughs> okay. <clears throat> so notice the difference in the file structure. So remember over here when we said new projects are going to be stored in the new projects root? That's what happened here. So you see that we created the, there was a file, file structure created called projects, and you have the, um, cats as the pro as the as the as the subfolder and then inside of that now we had all all of our project folders but um one thing i want you to notice as well see now we have an application type as um the the project type is is applications because we're doing a new application and the only other um project type is lib, lib which is for well, libraries which is for which is the next thing we're going to kind of go over. And then we have our default schematics and uh, we say that the project is going to be in the root project is going to be in uh, projects dot cat slash cat. And then the root source is projects cat source. And then the prefix is app. So the prefixes um, if so for anybody who don't know or just want to change their prefixes is for applications is going to be app. And for libraries, it's going to be lib for lib. So you'll notice the difference when we start going into libraries about just a little differences in what a library and um, and what uh, applications do on default. And note, I just want you to know also that uh, each each app has its own source files and a root module as well. So you see that there, um, just kind of how we do when we have a, a root module as well. And uh, one other thing that I want to show you, so I won't forget. Okay, so now you see at first we didn't have a default pro a default projects property there, but now we do because our first, so it will default to the first application you created after you create your workspace. So you see how that kind of changes and everything. These are kind of nuances that it's like, oh, it kind of, you know, you don't know until you actually have to go and do it. So now let's go even deeper and let's go into the libraries. Let me get back to the, wherever I was in Chrome. There it is. All right, so let's move on to library. So we first we did applications and covering like, okay, if I'm using the new command, different ways I can use a new command to create an empty workspace or a workspace with a default application or a works, an empty workspace with an application afterwards. And you kind of see how that varies in your Angular workspace file, which we're kind of, we got through the first few, right? So we got through these few here you kind of understand what's going on all the way up to, you know, line 15 for the prefix of how that looks and what those properties are. So we're going to keep going. We're going to keep going and we're going to give you more and cover at least all, if not all, the majority of the properties you're going to need to know when you're trying to advance further in your, you know, in your Angular career, and your skill set. Now let's talk about libraries. What are libraries good for? What are the benefits? What are they used for? So libraries are, are used primarily for, you know, code reuse across other applications or other libraries. Um, you can you they can be published to M as NPM packages, or they can be used to extend an, the you know, Angular fun the functionality of your Angular your current Angular projects. 
um, and they can be used by other developers. <clears throat> libraries can consume other libraries, so you can have a library like a, a a library that's just for you know design components that uses probably some functionality for processing payments or anything on a card. Like it, there was a a nice little card where you can say click to pay, and then it takes you to a PayPal um, a PayPal functionality. You can have a library that does one thing, and a library that does the other one. And you can have those in two separate libraries that you just use in the PayPal functionality from another library into yours because you don't want to go and create a whole bunch of, you know, security stuff and and um, authentication on your own, right? Just going to use somebody else's. So that's an, a way you a libraries use other libraries where someone else already created that PayPal functionality with the authentication and verification processes, and you're just using the inside of yours. So that'll be uh, an example of using a library within a library. And uh, libraries must be built before. So a thing that sometimes can trip you up if you're new, if you once you create a library and you probably start doing some code in it, you cannot use it until you build it. And once it's built, you can use it within inside of your, because you would think that, well, you know, since it's coded, I'm coding it inside of my workspace that I can automatically use it because it's just one workspace. But because libraries work a little bit differently, if you're starting to code and you want to, you know, use it into your in, in the application that's in the same workspace, you have to build it first. Um, and libraries will contain their own package.json file. So, in order to use a library, you um, you can generate a new library. So, when you want to create a new library, you use the ng g or ng generate g for short library library name. That's how. Just like when we when we did the application, we use ngg application, then application name. In this case, we're going to say library, then library name. And then once you, uh, and then to build it, you do ng build in the name of the library. And then to use it in your application, you have to import the, the library's module into your project's um, or if you're using it in another library, you import into the library's module that you in using the Dasherize project name. If you, you know, and we'll see how that works in a little bit later. And then you can start using it in your code and reference it in your code. So let's do that. We're going to do ng generate library and to generate a library inside of our project. And let's do it in this this project where we have, where we did this an empty workspace. So ng and let's call this library um, movement. So cats have movements, dogs have movements. We just want to create a general, or no, let's do food. I like food better. Mm, I love food. <laughs> Also, you got some love in the chat. Uh, I love how you made this so fun. Normally, this can be dry, yet an important topic. I needed this. So, oh, thank you. If you don't know, my nickname is Yvonne with the fun. All I do is bring the fun. <laughs> That's what I call myself. You see any of my talks, it's like, Yvonne with the fun. Because if it's not fun, I'm bored. So I get bored talking. I'm like, y'all talk to me because I swear. I don't make myself bored. <laughs> I bore myself out. So I usually have to create a theme or something to keep me riled up because I'm more like, yeah, this is boring. I've mm -hmm. been in talk where it's like, whoo, it's over? <laughs> Where's my milk? <laughs> you fell asleep, you know? You're like, oh, God, darn. So I, I always aim to at least be entertaining enough to get the information across and to get you to kind of be, you know, like, okay, I actually learned something because you're, if your brain is not stimulated, you're gonna like, you know, kind of veer off into La La Land and go visit Mary Poppins. And we don't wanna do that. We wanna <laughs> understand what's going on. <laughs> so, yeah, sadly, me and Mary are good friends. So we, I'm affiliated. <laughs> I got a lamb and everything on credit. <laughs> so <laughs> as you can see here, we got, we got, so don't get confused. So as you can see, you would think, okay, these are projects. Remember, everything in the Angular workspace is a project, whether it's an application or a library, it's still a project, but you have a bunch of projects in the workspace. So you see them there, but let's explain why you see them there. 
So let's go up now because new things got added to our um into our workspace. Let's, let's minimize cat because these these things can start going all over the place. Ha! Food. So <clears throat> food was the new uh project we added, which is in this case, the project type is now library. Okay, remember I showed you at first we have project type applications, then project types library. And now we see the list of things, a list of config, default configurations, sorry, do that one, default configurations that come when you create a new library. So Angular is like, I'm a helper. I want to help you. Let me help you by, by automating some of the things you do when you first create a library, okay? And so it gives you some default configurations. So let's go over what these default configurations are. You get out of the box with Angular because they're so awesome. You got root. So it tells you the root location is in projects food. So as we saw right over here, the root location is projects, then food. So that's where all your stuff related to this, um, this library will be housed. So now you know where that is. Now for your source files, all your source files would be in projects, food, Source. So let's go projects, food, source, source files. Look at that. Okay. So as we can see, at first in applications, you have projects, cats, app, but this is not an app. So we did a library. So in the library, you get food, you get source lib. So in lib, you will see all of your, your, your template and your logic files for your, your library that you're going to be, you know, developing in. <clears throat> You get your test files, your um, your TS files, and your your um, your your template files all right here. So you get, of course, the default one. It's going to be food because the name of the project. Just like if you um, in app, you have apps. All right. So let's minimize that because we now know what have what the the project structure of libs. Now we're not, I'm going to. And then you have your default prefix, just like I told you before, how with apps, you is app, with applications is app, um, right here. But if you're doing a library, let's minimize this, it's going to be lit. So now that you, we kind of covered the, this this area, then this version, so versions is the, the version of your application. So if you're going into production, this number will change here. But that's this first half here. That's all the first half of, you know, having a project. And then we're going to go into architect now. So, so we did our scuba dive. We was on the surface. We was in our sand dune. We was playing around. Pity pat, pity pat. We had our scuba gear on. We had our um, snorkeling gear on. We saw some pretty fishes. I saw Nemo and Dora. They were amazing. Now. We're gonna go a little deeper, and we're gonna go some. We're gonna go scuba diving. So we're gonna put the big boy and girl tank on. We're gonna put that big old tank on, and we're gonna go into the other stuff that usually confuses us past the. You know, most people can't figure out. You know, project name. I get that. But once we start going into architect and builders and targets and com, you know configuration objects, like what is that? So we're gonna go and we're gonna dissect that in our scuba gear. We're gonna go and see um, architect and the reef. Okay, we're gonna get some. We're gonna go to the Great Barrier Reef, and we're gonna figure these little things out. Okay, because each one is a property or object, and they have an important meaning and value in the Angular projects. And we need to know what that is, because once we get into a big enterprise, and they have way more variables and objects than we can understand, we need to at least know the bare minimum and how to at least you know figure things out. We can't do that if we don't know what the objects mean anyway. And you know, Google. It takes us hours when you, you're beginning. You don't know what's going on. You can Google for hours to don't have the answer. So um, let's talk about projects. <clears throat> I'm going to give you this overview because I kind of deep dive into this already. But we're just going to kind of, you know, reiterate what I showed you already. So at first, we have the project's names. And this in this case, we named our project first app. And then we have the project type, as I mentioned before. Application for applications, lib, library for libs. Then the schematics will be a list of schematics and the default configurations or any alterations to those default configurations. Um, def default configurations. In this case, if you create an um, application and you use SAS as your style type, it'll say SAS. Or if you do CSS, it'll say CSS. But when you first do the ng new 
um, workspace name, and then they're going to ask you what file type would you like to use for your style sheets. That's where this um, this will come in handy, or this that configuration is coming from. So if you want to change that to, you know, when you use the ng new or ng generate application, and you don't want to use SAS anymore, you want to use CSS files or any other type of styling file, you can change that there if you already created your application or um, in your workspace. Then you have your roots. We already saw where that comes from. And the new root is going to be the name of the projects directory and the, 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 the application's name. Then you have your source root, which is projects, first app, and then source is where your source files go. Then your, your selector prefix will be what um, what goes on the front of your um, your component names. So when you go inside of the TS file, when you see it, the, the selector is going to be app dash, uh, whatever your component is, you can change that prefix here. And then architect. Architect is, um, is what we're going to get into next, which is your build your builder targets, your, your architect builder targets. And we're going to cover that in like right now. <laughs> so... This is where we're, we, we kind of went deep into the sea now. We are in the waters, okay? We can't go back yet because we got a long way to go down. So architects, let's talk about what architects are. So architect um, is a tool that the CLI uses to perform tasks such as compiling code. You can, you can run tests. So when you're running your test using the ng test command, this is what is part of the whole architect uh, bubble. An architect is basically a shell that delegates that delegates the execution of the the execution to the builders defined in the npm package that is assigned to the target. And if I just confused you, I understand because I copied <laughs> that exact same thing from the document, the Angular doc, and I like to use this exact verbiage so that I can be like, so that's why beginners is so lost when you say something. <laughs> And you're like, so what now? So like, I literally, so luckily for me, I have friends that are that are better at it, at this than me, and can be like, oh yeah, let me let me explain to you what that means, and I will do that for you. I will be that person that say, I got you, I got your back. Let me explain how what that means. But the architect, so in the Angular workspace file, which we will go to in a second. The architect section provides the configuration option for architect builders, which we will cover what architect builders are as well. But I want to give you kind of a scenario here. So when we're talking about architect, let's think about Christmas. OK, you have in Christmas, you have the North Pole in the North Pole. You have Santa Claus, elves and toys. So since you think of an architect as Santa, Santa is the architect. He delegates what you know everything that goes on in the santa's workshop then you have the elves the elves are the one who actually builds the toys okay but each elf have their own different they have their own they their workstations that they go to so let's say we need bikes so you have the elves that build bikes then you got the elves that build dolls and you got the elves that build jack in the box that scares all the kitties so each one of those have their own tasks so targets are the elves and they use the builders in order to build toys. So that's how you can think about architect builders and targets. So their builders are tools. So our elves tools are the builders and this screwdriver knows how to screw in screws on the bike. Okay. So that's how that works. And, and all together, all the builders will eventually build a bike. So that's how you can think about it if you need like something to wrap your head around how that works. But we were covering more uh, angular centric type examples further along. So targets, here we are with targets. Um, targets are defined in the angular workspace file. Let's, um, let's go back though. I wanna show you this so that we can see it in real life. All right, so this is the architect object. Let's minimize that. So this is what it looks like minimized. It goes right under the in each individual, well, right under the projects area here. And you will see 
a bunch of build targets. So these are the build targets and we will get to that now. So build targets are defined in the Angular workspace, uh, are, are all defined in the Angular workspace file. A target um, <clears throat> specifies the builder to use, so the type of tool to use to get the job done and its default configurations that will be used if no other alternatives are supplied during execution. So like if you're, when you're, when you are putting in the target, the command for the target in the command line, you can specify different flags to use that will override uh, the, the default configurations that are set in the Angular workspace file. And um, so let's look at that. So as you can see here, you have the builder, the target. We have a build target called build. So that one, as we all know, we use that a lot. Ng build is a is a, is used to build a project, right? So as you can see, you have the name of the the builder being used, which is the browser builder, and that is located in this npm package. And then also you can specify. Down here, as you can see, any type of alternative configurations, and we will talk about this as well. Alternative configurations are basically like dev. You can have dev, you can be in test, you can be in production. These are where you can set these configurations based on the environment or the configuration, because after Angular 6, the environments got turned into configurations. So if you notice a difference in that, especially if you're looking on, uh, if you can kind of confuse about when we deep dive into that configurations object, like what's going on there, like that's because the word environments got turned into configuration. So that's what, you know, you have your prod, your pre-prod test dev. So as I mentioned, well, I would like to mention if I didn't, that Angular comes with a set of default targets built in for you because as we said, Angular is awesome and they will help you and they love to help, they're helpers. So instead of saying, you need to learn how to build a project on your own using Webpack and learn how to, you know, text using, you know, test your application using Karma all by yourself. It was like, we're gonna give you builders and targets that that does this for you. So off default, we have some default targets as you can see that correspond to some default CLI commands. That's what makes it easy, right? Because the name of the CLI command is the same as the name of the target. So that's another way the Angular is like, we don't want you to worry. We got you. You don't have to worry about this weird name. It's the same as the CLI command. It comes built in for you. So this, the ones that you'll see normally and what you will see in your Angular workspace file when you first create your workspace and with the application is build, test. So build corresponds to ng build, test, ng test, end to end is ng e to e. Got linting, ng serve, and extra um, extract i eighteen n. So these are the ones that come with you. That's why those, if you were like looking like, oh, I think I know what that is. I mean, you go into the Angular workspace files. Those are how that correlates to each other. So when you're changing things in that target, and you want your application. So right now, let's say a target is to build your application. But you want now to build your application in, um, by default, it's, it's prod. But if you want to build it in test two, test three, these are the targets you can you can change those configurations objects um, options in your targets objects. When we go back into the Angular workspace file, Angular workspace file in a second, I will show you you know a little bit about that as well. So then we have your builders. So the builders do the actual work. The target is like this is. This is the thing that we're we're targeting build building something. We want to build something. All right, your target is to build. So think of it as a verb. To build, to test, to end to end. These are like verbs that is telling you this is what I want to do in my application. And builders is how you actually do it. So that's a more real world, you know, scenario of uh, how architect builders and um, targets work. So you have a different, a particular task you want to do. That's, that's how you say a target. <clears throat> I want to build applications. I want to uh, automate. Uh, you can do it. You can do like customizing. When you start to customize, you want to automate 
things uh, like, let's say, automate payments. You want to do that in your project. That can be a custom build. But custom build is for a different talk that's a little bit more advanced than what we're going to cover now because that's a whole lot of coding that we it's like, what? You don't want to go there yet, especially if you're new. You don't want to go into that Pandora box. So that's a bigger <laughs> box, box that we have right, we're ready for here. But um, so, yeah, builders do the actual work. And the builders are they're basically functions that use the architect API to perform a complex process, such as, like we said, building or doing a test. So there are functions, guys. If, if that were, if that whole sentence, sorry, I'm sweating, it's hot in my room, but I don't want to just get up and turn the fan on. But you can, you can if you want, but you're, you're killing it. You're killing okay. Yeah, you go. You go. Right, you fan it up. Okay, I'm back. So what that basically means is, um, because we got to take it all the way back to the root, everybody. So new developers, it is just a function that does something. It's behind the scenes doing something. You created a function. That function has a set of coding instructions to do, and you just basically told your your uh, builder how to automate something in your project. That is the simplest way to tell you what a builder is. A builder is a function that does a set of instructions that you told it to do for your application. So technically you can think of it as a mini application in your application. It's like a smaller one that does a, something for the big one, okay? So um, all of the code for the builder is defined in an NPM package as we saw earlier. And as you can see here in this slide, the name of the package is Ang un, um, at angler dev kit slash build dash angler colon browser because that's the for the browser build for the browser builder and basically what the browser the ooh this is say that fast browser builder <laughs> try to say that very fast browser <laughs> builder <laughs> runs webpack to build you know to build for the browser target so that's how you can see your um your application on a browser. And then you have Karma. Karma is used. The Karma build is used to start your start the Karma server and run your Webpack builds and tests. So those are what those two are. And let's take a look at that because we 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 do a lot of talking, but I want to show you now, right? Let's see it because seeing is believing. So as we saw earlier, we have let's let's minimize this again so you can kind of see it. Um, you have your build. Let's go down. You have your build with its options. You have test. Okay, so this one only has build and test. Uh, other ones we don't have, but uh, <clears throat> this one has build and then you have test. So these are how you can see under architect. Now we have our targets, just like we saw earlier. And then we have the builder, the type of builder we have. And this one now is the new one. So as you see, that slide is a little bit older, but you have build angular ng packager so that's our builder for building for doing builds and this is what the options that we have so we're going to be using so it just says where we're going to you know use what we're going to use for this it's projects food ng package.json then you have your configurations as we as we recall the word configuration just mean environments okay it's like which environment which which configuration are we going to use for this environment? That's how you can think about what that object means. So let's say for our our production environment, these are the configurations that we're going to use. And for our development environment, these are the configurations we're going to use. So I hope that makes more sense if you think about it in the reverse, that the the object inside of the the, the, the child object kind of Let's you know what the configurations is for. So this one is um is for our for the TS configuration files. You have this. Um, if you look in older projects, you have come out the bat is the um, file systems. I think it's called um, configuration. Let me make sure. Yeah, I don't think I have it in the slide, but yeah, you have other configurations that also came out of the box with this. But as you can see, I kept to my word and gave you everything that comes into that Angular Workspace file. 
Now you see exactly what comes in it. And let's just for fun, let's compare that with our previous project because this project, as we, as if you recall, we did an empty workspace. Let's see how it looks if we look at the one with the default project, just so we can make a comparison and you can see. So as you can see, you have all these different budgets on um, properties that come out of the box with it that we don't have. Um, and this is just for optimization purposes. You don't want to worry about that uh, right now, but these are just kind of telling you how, like file sizing for optimization of your projects is kind of gives you that out of the box. Cause some people have, you know, bigger projects, but that comes into play when your projects are a little bit bigger. But one of the things that, a lot of people want it was more, you know, out of the box, smaller angular projects. So that's kind of where those come from. And as you can see in your configurations inside of production. So now we're seeing the difference, right? Um, you have file replacements. So this is for production. It's just saying your, your default environments file. We're going to now use environments.prod.ts.ts for when we go, when we want to do builds into production and when we want to go into production or anything, we're doing configurations inside of production. So then the one for development have build optimus, you know, you can, you can inside of your development environment, you can do certain things. And these are what those defaults are. So you can play around with those if you want to. Uh, <clears throat> but as you can see, the default configuration will be production. So in the other ones, you have serve which is what we were talking about for ng serve you have the builder for ng serve it's going to be uh dev well the, the the serve target is going to be dev server so this is now you can just kind of go through your own and see exactly like okay now i understand what these these configurations and these objects are doing and inside of the test one we now we're saying okay it's saying it's going to use the karma builder so if you want to use um another different uh test builder you can do that as well, but this is where it says this is we're using Karma. If you use Protractor, you use it, it'll be using a different builder. But out of the box, you get Karma. And then yeah, a few of the options here, you can see you just your this is where your test files are gonna be, um, any polyfills that you're gonna need, and then your assets. People know about that one, which is for basically your fa your favicon and where your assets folder is gonna be going. So any of you, if you have any pictures, anything like that, or any, any audio files that you want to put into your application or add to your application for any reason, it'll go into the source assets folder and then your styles. So all the, the um, any extra configurations for your styles can go into css.styles.css. I'm saying styles.css. It's just saying this is where your styles go. But I think most of you may already know about that one because that's, that's shown in a lot of tutorials. So that one you may know already, but as, as stated, this is the Pandora's box of the Angular workspace file, also known as angular.json. So I hope this helped and the deep dive, you know, you discovered a lot of new fishes in the sea of <laughs> angular.json and, you know, maybe you can take home some souvenirs, you know, from the ocean, but not a fish though, because, you know, it's not, <laughs> not nice to take them out of their habitat. But uh, <laughs> this is... You know, any resources that you, you can use to kind of deep dive into what I talked about, you can go to these. Most of them are on the Angular, uh, Angular documentation themselves. So I got this from the Angular website, most of this, and one article about like the different environments you can play around with. So I hope this helped. Again, this was Yvonne Allen. You can reach me at, um, at on Twitter at yallen011. And I hope this helped a lot. Yes, we have. It we, did, put, it, put it here, here. I, I, Captain, put it in the that comments. Was, that was beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. And lots of love from the chat. We, I just am so thankful for you and cannot just thank you so much for coming on the show today. You, like, 10 out of 10. It was beautiful. You're so entertaining and a wonderful teacher. So I just feel very blessed to have you on the thank show. Thank you, you so much. much. <laughs> Oh my goodness. All right. Well, I am going to let you go and uh, wrap the show. But again, thank you for everything, Yvonne. <laughs>
Thanks, everyone. Thanks for sticking around. <laughs> Bye. <laughs>